attracting thirds. Now, the good thing, I think, about thirds is that often they behave a lot like algebra, okay? And so in adding and subtracting thirds, you can add and subtract thirds if they are like thirds, okay? So it says up here, only like thirds can be added and subtracted. That sounds a lot like algebra, doesn't it? Only like terms, so you only add x's with x's. And so for thirds, it's the same. Only like thirds can be added and subtracted together. However, we do have to be careful that we've simplified our thirds first because sometimes they might not look like like thirds to start with, but if we simplify them down like we learnt last lesson, then they might become like thirds. Okay, and that's what this one here is. Write the thirds in simplest form before you add and subtract. All right, so example number one, A, we are adding 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2. So they both have the square root 2, making them like thirds. So again, just like algebra, if I want to add those together, all I do is add the numbers in front, 5 plus 3 is 8, and the root 2 sits at the end, just like an x would. So it is 8 root 2s, okay, that's it. B, looking for like thirds. I have 2 root 3 plus 3 root 2 plus 5 root 3 minus 6 root 2. Okay, looking at the square roots, let's start with the root 3s. I have 2 root 3 and I have a plus 5 root 3. Okay, they are the like thirds. Remember, I've highlighted the symbol in front to tell me that I'm adding. So 2 plus 5 is 7 root 3s. Then I now need to look at the other ones. I have some root 2s here. 3 root 2 minus 6 root 2. So just subtracting the numbers in front, 3 take away 6 is negative 3 root 2s. Okay, just like you would x's and y's, they stay separate. I cannot put the root 3s with the root 2s. All right, good. Part C... 5 root 3 minus 7 plus root 2 plus 2. Now the thirds, the root 3 and the root 2, they're different. Can't do anything with those. The only things in there that can be collected is the minus 7 and the plus 2. The ones that are even, aren't even thirds at all. The whole numbers are the only ones that I can collect there. So I'm going to write the thirds down. It doesn't matter the order that you put them in as long as you get the sign in front correct. So I'm going to go 5 root 3. And I have a plus root 2. I can't do anything with those ones. But minus 7 plus 2 can be collected to make a minus 5. Okay? All right. Hopefully that makes sense. We just that's, that's the basic concept. But from here on in, we have to do the extra step first, which means we have to check for simplifying. Because when I look at this next one, I have root 8 plus 3 root 2. Now... A root 8 and a root 2 are not the same, yet. We know that a root 8, though, 8 can be simplified. And you can see that I've already written down my perfect square numbers here on the side, like we were doing yesterday. So I'm looking at that 8, going, what number can I divide by out of those? Or 4, okay? So I'm going to split the root 8 to be root 4 times root 2, because 8 is 4 times 2. Yeah? Then I'm just going to leave that 3 root 2 sitting on the end. It's just waiting until I'm ready, okay? I can continue simplifying that first one. The root 4 is the perfect square, so it becomes a 2. 2 root 2 just sits after it, plus 3 root 2. And by simplifying, they have now become like thirds. They are now both root 2s. So I can add them. 2 plus 3, just the numbers out the front, makes 5, 5 root 2s. Yeah? Um, yeah, how did you get them to square root of 3? So I, just the square root of 4 is 2, so that one I square root that number, and that just sits after oh. Alright, we're going to practice that a few more times. E and F is doing the same thing. I need to simplify all my thirds first. So let's just do one at a time. First of all, the root 20. Don't worry about the 3 sitting out the front. Just leave it there. The 20. Looking at the perfect square numbers. Let me move them back down. The perfect square numbers. 
Which one of those can I use? The four again. The four is a very useful one. 20 is four times five. Okay, so I've split the third. All right, let's do the next one. Leave the minus two. Now the 45. Nine, nine times five. So square root nine times square root five. Great. And the five on the end. Can I simplify that? No. no? Good. All right, so we just write it down. Okay, the second line. I'm now going to go and square root all of the perfect square ones. So I had a three. The square root of four is two, so it's going to become a two root five. On to the second term. I had a minus two. Square root of nine is three, so three root five, plus that one random root five sitting on the end. Okay? Now, on the next step, I'm going to multiply these numbers at the front. Okay? So 2 times 3 is 6, root 5. And for the next one, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, root 5, plus a root 5 on the end. Some of you may find that you will start going from that line to that line straight away. And that's all right as long as you are comfortable doing that. I would rather you do the extra step, though, than make a mistake. Carly? Why don't you add the root 5 to this thing in the I'm going to. I'm just going to do them all together at the end. So one more step to go is now that they are all like thirds, so they're all root fives, I'm going to add and subtract those numbers together. So I have six minus six. That's actually nothing. They disappear. And so I just have that one root five on the end. Okay? So simplifying. It took me three lines to simplify it. And then that one line on the end was doing my adding and subtracting. Okay? So it would be zero, because you mean like, so six minus seven plus one? Yeah, because you know how it is, they yeah. both cancel out, so there's nothing there. Yeah, so if everything disappeared, it would just be zero. Okay. Zero, all gone. But we did have one for this one. All right, F, same process, let's practice it again. One term at a time, we are going to simplify. So leave the three at the front. The 27, looking for a perfect square? Nine, good. So the 27 is nine times by three. So split the third. Next one, leave the minus four. Twelve, what number? Four times three, good. So four times three is twelve. On to the eight. We've done one of these before. Four times two, so root four times root two. And the 11 root 3, can we do anything with that root 3? Nah. Okay. So second, I'm going to do all the steps, but remember if you want to skip this second one, that's okay. I'm going to square root the 9. So I leave the 3 out the front. Square root of 3 is 9. Uh, sorry, square root of 9 is 3, so 3 root 3. Minus 4. Square root the 4 is 2 root 3. Next one, square root of 4 is 2, root 2, plus the 11 root 3 sitting on the end. Okay, now to multiply the numbers at the front of each of those thirds. So 3 times 3 is 9, root 3. Next one, 4 times 2 is 8, root 3. Next one is 2, root 2. That doesn't really need simplifying, and neither does the last one. So just writing them down again. Okay, so they're not all like thirds, but we want to collect the ones that are. So the first two are both root threes. So we have nine, take away eight, one. which is one, root three. Oh, wait, sorry, there is another one at the end. Root three, root three, root three. Don't mean that means the last one. So we have nine, take away eight is one, plus the 11 is 12 root threes. And the two root two, it doesn't have anything to collect with, so it's just sitting there on the end. And that's it. Yeah.